So this is a 2.7 meter diameter cast iron tunnel and almost 2 meter beneath my feet there is a gigantic 11 meter diameter cross rail tunnel that is being excavated right now uh, to form one of cross rail sta uh, platform tunnel stations. The cross rail project is the, is the largest civil engineering project uh, presently under construction in, in the whole of Europe. Um, so it's a very large underground construction project with all sorts of uh, engineering challenges. Um, one of the most important ones being, you know, how is it, um, how is it possible to construct large tunnels underneath urban infrastructure without causing any distress to those to the, to, the, to those buildings and other tunnels? And the at, at Liverpool Street Station, uh, there is one example of of a very intricate part of the engineering of Crossrail, which involves constructing some very large new tunnels directly underneath um, other tunnels including the old post office railway tunnel. Well this is an exceptional event in the tunneling history because you have the cross rail platform that is being ex excavated right under us and it runs for 100 meters parallel to this tunnel. This has never happened before. Uh, a lot of movements are going to be transferred from, from that excavation to our tunnel and that makes it make this project of two particular importance. One is because we get to get the chance to study the cast iron behavior in detail that have not been done before. And secondly, we get to trial some of our groundbreaking technologies. So the, the, the cast iron tunnel is, is, is formed of uh, individual segments, which are, are constructed into a, into a ring of segments. Um, this is commonly known as, as the segment panel, or the pan. And these are, are the, the flanges. In this case, these are the circumferential flanges, and these are the, the radial flanges. Particularly at this point along the crown of the tunnel, we can detect whether the tunnel is deforming in a, um, a uniform bending, i.e. tube-type mode, or in a more of a shearing mode, where the individual rings uh, all displace in, in kind of a, a vertical shear, like a, like a sawtooth. In, in essence, the main problem is how much will the uh, post office railway tunnel move? And you know, will that movement be a tolerably small amount? And, and can we be sure of that? And, and exactly what, what kind of mechanics are involved in the way in which it moves? All of which is quite complex. And so we have a variety of different sensors. We have optical fiber to measure the strain longitudinally all the way along the post office railway, railway tunnel which really the optical fibre can show us how, it, how the post office railway tunnel deforms, how it bends, if you like. We also have displacement uh, transducers, which are installed in a whole lot of locations along the post office railway tunnel without any wires. So they are actually able to measure displacements of one part of the post office railway tunnel relative to the next part, and then wirelessly transmit the data uh, to a receiving station. And thirdly, we're using some very exciting new com computer vision techniques that we've developed here at Cambridge. So we have these three new technologies, all of which are all um, quite, well, um, quite well tried, quite well proven, but need to be applied in real life situations such as the post office railway tunnel. Um, the sensors itself, they are very small and light and very long battery life. So they are, we are pushing nearly zero power, which is what we're trying to achieve uh, for long term. And the sensors, uh, they uh, measure in, the, in this tunnel, in particularly the humidity, temperature, acceleration, and tilt. That will enable us to tell the, um, uh, the deformation in the, uh, basically in the tunnel. By installing the kind of sensors that CSIC is working with, that can actually then give a, a continuous uh, update as to how much those tunnels might be deforming, um, what changes are taking place. And by putting these kinds of sensors into that kind of infrastructure, we can really answer a lot of important questions about the value of our current infrastructure, the, the future of it, whether it needs to be maintained, um, whether it needs to be replaced. All those kind of questions can be 
can be much better quantified.